Hi, I'm Chris Sangster, and welcome back to the studio. And welcome to episode three of What Are They Emulating? In this series, I examine plugins that emulate analog hardware. They're all over the place in modern music production, and we all love them. But because of copyright protections or marketing reasons, most of these plugins just have tongue-in-cheek names that hint at the classic hardware they're emulating, but don't come right out and say exactly what they're supposed to sound like. So I'm here to decipher the intentions of these plugins and create a resource that producers and engineers can rely on to know what piece of analog gear a plugin is attempting to sound like. In episodes one and two, we looked at the Logic Pro Stock Compressor plugin and the Vintage EQ Collection. This time, we turn our attention to another popular and powerful Logic Pro Stock plugin, Amp Designer. Logic Pro's Guitar Amp Simulating plugin, Amp Designer, is packed full of emulations of famous amps and cabinets. Featuring emulations of vintage and modern equipment, this plugin boasts 25 different amp types with tons of possible combinations and extra features that make it a real beast of a plugin. And as I dove into Amp Designer, all of the nuances of this plugin proved one thing to me for sure. This plugin was designed by guitar nerds. No doubt about it. The attention to detail here is really impressive. So we've got a lot to cover. So much, in fact, I'm gonna split this episode into several videos. Make sure you get subscribed to the channel to be the first to know when the next part is available. In this video, we're gonna look at the foundation, the amplifiers that really started it all. They make up eight of the 25 emulations in Amp Designer, and without this one company, it's pretty safe to say that rock music as we know it wouldn't exist. But to get us started, I wanna quickly define some key terms that you will hear me use a lot in these videos, so we're all on the same page. Guitar amplifiers come in two different styles. There are combo amps that contain the amplifier circuitry and the speakers all within one box. This is your typical home or practice style amp, and if you play electric guitar, you've probably owned one. Then there is the head and speaker variety of guitar amps. This is where you have one box that contains the amplifier, the circuitry, the knobs, the input jack, etc., and then a separate box houses the speakers. This box is called a cabinet or cab for short. This setup is typically much louder and more expensive and is generally found on stages in larger venues or in recording studios. The term amplifier or amp for short is a bit of a catch-all. It can refer to a combo amp, just the amp head of a head and speaker setup or the entirety of a head and speaker setup. And I will use that term pretty liberally throughout the videos. However, when I refer to a combo or to a cab, I am speaking about those specific setups. Another type of terminology you will hear a lot in relation to guitar amps is the cab dimension. This is a numerical description of the number of speakers inside an amp and how large in inches those speakers are. For example, a 4x12 cab will have four speakers that are each 12 inches in diameter. These numbers can be used to describe the speakers in both combo and head and speaker setups, despite being generally referred to as cab dimensions. Now, let's have a quick look at the basic setup of the plugin before we dive into the specific emulations. One very cool and interesting feature of Amp Designer is that it has an amp head and a cabinet for every single amp emulation, whether or not the original hardware was a head and speaker design. This allows you to combine the sound of the speakers from any unit with the sound of the amplifier from any other unit, offering an insane number of sonic possibilities. The amplifier stage is represented here in this section with the classic looking knobs to adjust the parameters. The parameters you can tweak on these knobs stays the same for each amp model. We have input gain, three bands of EQ, bass, mids, and treble, then reverb on, off, and level, then tremolo or vibrato effect and the associated depth and speed controls, then a final high-end EQ called presence, 
And then we end here with the master volume, which is the output gain of the amp going into the cabinet. Then this section on the right represents the cabinet and also the microphone that is being used to virtually capture the sound of the speakers. Finally, down in this bottom section, we have the menus where we can change the amp model. This will pull up the matched amp head and cab for each emulation. Then there are menus to choose the amp head and cabinet separately, a menu to change the microphone type, and a final master output gain slider for the whole plugin. This little triangle right here collapses the plugin into its reduced view where only the amp controls are visible. That's the basics. Now let's dive into the nitty gritty and look at exactly what each amp model is emulating. First up, small tweed combo. And this one introduces us to the first of our major players in the guitar amp world, Fender. Specifically, this is an emulation of a Fender Tweed Deluxe. Clarence Leonidas Fender founded his eponymous brand as a radio repair service in 1938 in Fullerton, California. But soon after, Leo Fender became interested in what he considered to be design flaws in musical instrument amplifiers of the time. This led him to eventually abandon the repair business altogether and focus on manufacturing musical instruments and amplifiers. The legacy of Leo Fender is felt across the musical landscape to this day, having invented two of the most important instruments of all time, the Telecaster and the Stratocaster, despite not being a guitarist himself. The list of innovations to the design and manufacturing of guitars, basses, and amplifiers, as well as his outsized impact on musical culture, has rightly earned him the moniker, the Henry Ford of the electric guitar. But we're here to focus on his amp designs. Leo Fender's first foray into manufacturing guitar amplifiers came during his brief partnership with Doc Kaufman. For four years in the mid-1940s, Fender and Kaufman would run K&F Manufacturing Corp., which designed and manufactured lap steel guitars and amplifiers. These amps would lay the groundwork for the amplifiers that rocked the world the Fender Tweeds. The term tweed refers to the luggage style linen covering used on Fender amps in the 1950s. These amps remain some of the most desirable and copied amp designs of all time. They're so popular that Fender makes a whole range of modern tweed reissue amps. Fender Tweeds are known for simply sounding great. The prototypical plug and play amplifier that it is easy to get a great tone out of. Notably, they are all combo style amps that offered a great sound and a portable form factor that made them a go-to choice for gigging musicians. They specialized in clean tones, perfect for the rockabilly and surf music of the 1950s, but because of their limited headroom, they made a natural companion for artists experimenting with more distorted tones that would push rock music forward into its heyday. And when looking at Fender Tweeds, there's no better place to start than the Fender Deluxe. A 1x12 combo amp with two 6V6 output tubes, two volume controls, and a simple tone knob, it is the definition of the small tweed sound. And it is the first emulation available in the Logic Pro Amp Designer. We see here the typical tweed coloring and that we indeed have that 1x12 cab dimension. Let's hear how it sounds. A quick note for all the sound examples, I'm gonna try to use pretty neutral EQ settings with no effects and keep the mic the same throughout. That way we can hear a fair comparison between the different amp models. 
to our next Fender Tweed emulation, we have the Large Tweed Combo, which is an emulation of a Fender Tweed Bassman. If the Deluxe is the prototypical small tweed sound, then the Bassman is the Large Tweed sound. Originally, it was, as the name suggests, a bass amp. In fact, it was created because of the success of another great Fender creation, the Precision Bass. At the time of the P Bass's release, Fender did not have a suitable bass amp in its lineup. This led to the creation of the early TV style bassman. By 1955, Fender had iterated on the bassman several times and released its most famous iteration, the narrow panel 4x10 design. And by this time, guitarists were wise to the fact that this amp did not just sound good on bass, but was an excellent amp for guitar as well. And Fender seemed to be well aware of this. With a price listing for a 1955 bassman reading, while its characteristics have been designed to accommodate string bass, at the same time, it makes an excellent amplifier for use with other musical instruments. There were many iterations of the basement throughout the mid to late 50s that featured upgraded controls and speaker types, culminating with what many consider to be one of the greatest guitar amps of all time, the model 5F6A. Now, an important note here is that the controls available on the hardware models of these amps have not been replicated exactly in Amp Designer. Instead of changing the control scheme to match each specific amp, the designer of this plugin decided to give the full range of controls to each amp. This makes the emulations slightly less true to the original amps, but much more flexible for dialing in your tone. out our Fender Tweed emulations is the Mini Tweed Combo, and this one is a little harder to pin down. The assumption would be that it's one of two amps, either a Fender Tweed Champ or a Fender Tweed Princeton. Both represented the smallest of the Tweed lineup and were stalwarts of the Fender Tweed era. The problem is these amps both used one 8-inch speaker, but here in Amp Designer, the Mini Tweed Combo uses a 1x10 cab. Now, it turns out that there was a much rarer small Fender Tweed amp that used a 1x10 design. The Fender Harvard. Essentially a souped up Princeton, it filled a lineup gap between the Princeton and the Deluxe. So, what do we think? Did the designers make an oversight and give a Champ or Princeton emulation a 10-inch speaker? Or were they such guitar nerds that they actually emulated a rare Fender amp that was famously used by Steve Cropper in Booker T and the MGs and can be heard on classic records like Green Onions and Sitting on the Dock of the Bay? I'm going with the latter. Mm -hmm. 
Now, Leo Fender was nothing if not an innovator, and Fender was constantly updating and changing both the cosmetics and the circuitry of their amps throughout the 50s and 60s. That's why there is such a large variety of Fender amps from this time period, and it's also why pinpointing an exact amp that any software is trying to emulate is a bit difficult. However, Fender amps do have recognizable eras based on their cosmetics that enthusiasts now use to group them. The TV front amps kicked it off with their wooden cabinets, followed by two generations of tweeds, the wide panel and the narrow panel. They then moved into a transitional period from 1959 to 1963, and the amps from this era are known as brown or blonde because of the color of their Tolex vinyl covering. And the next Fender emulation we're going to look at comes from this era. In Amp Designer, it is called the Small Brown Panel Combo. Ignore the fact that the Fender emulations don't go in chronological order in the model list. In my opinion, the most important amp of this era was the 1963 Vibroverb. It's such a pivotal amp in Fender's history because it was the first to incorporate a reverb circuit into a combo amp. However, that amp had a 2x12 design, so we're going to have to look to its predecessor for the 1x12 design emulated here in Amp Designer. That amp is the Fender Vibro Lux made famous by Mark Knopfler of Dire Straits on Sultans of Swing, one of my favorite guitar tones of all time. to the bigger 15 inch speaker we have the Blues Blaster combo model, which is most likely emulating the Fender Pro of the blonde brown era. The bigger 15 inch speaker was a popular choice among guitarists of the era and the Pro branding positioned it right at the top of the Fender combo line. blonde era of Fender amps was short-lived, and in 1963 it was replaced by the next foundational era of Fender amps, the Black Panel era. These amps with their black Tolex covering, black panel controls, and silver grills came to define American guitar sound in the 1960s. The Black Panel era of Fender amps tends to be divided into two parts, 
pre-CBS and CBS. This is because in 1965, Leo Fender was suffering major health complications that resulted in him stepping away from the business and ultimately selling Fender to CBS. However, the legacy and designs of Leo Fender persisted under CBS's ownership for a while, and the black panel amps stuck around for three more years. The first black panel amp emulation here in Amp Designer is called Large Black Panel Combo, and this is most certainly emulating a Fender black panel super reverb a true monster of a combo amp with four 10 inch speakers. This design would remain in the Fender lineup for 20 years and become a staple of studios and venues alike. The tube amp design coupled with a built-in tremolo and spring reverb made it a modern marvel when it was released in 1963 and that made guitarists more than willing to lug around 65 pounds worth of Fender. Fender amps, especially of this era, are known for their scooped mids. That is a natural dip in the middle of the frequency spectrum, and we find this on the Logic Amp Designer as well. Next up, the mini black panel combo. By this era of Fender amps, the Harvard had been discontinued and the Princeton had been redesigned with a 10 inch speaker, as well as coming in a reverb equipped version. So I think we can safely assume that is what is being emulated here. The final Fender emulation and amp designer brings us into the next and final vintage era of Fender amps, the silver panel era. These amps were all designed and sold under the ownership of CBS, and this has made them slightly less desirable in the eyes of many collectors. The silver panel combo model with its 2x12 cab layout is most certainly emulating a Fender Twin Reverb, a very popular amp that had been in the lineup since the Tweed days. And through examining the history of the Twin Reverb in the silver panel era, we can see the growing pains of Fender under the leadership of CBS that has turned guitarists and collectors off to this generation of amps. <laughs> 
The silver faceplate was introduced in 1967 and the early iterations of the twin reverb in that era were still two based and very similar to the black panel models. However, from 1968 onwards, CBS began making changes to the internal design of the twin amp by leading Fender's first foray into solid state amps, which was truly a disaster, both for the quality of the amps and for the business. Fender's true calling as an amp manufacturer has always had vacuum tubes at its heart, and that's why you see so many modern reissue Fender amps with tubes. As for the amp designer, I believe they are still trying to emulate the tube-based twin reverb here and wanted to pay homage to the last era of vintage Fender amps by including one emulation with a silver faceplate. we go, all eight of the Fender models in Logic Pro's amp designer uncovered. Stay tuned for the next episode where we will take a trip across the pond and dive into the other pillar of vintage guitar amps. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you at the studio next time.